So now we have five LEDs in series. Their anodes are headed towards the more positive side of the power and their cathodes are headed towards the more negative, but it's a string of them. We got one resistor that sets the current. So there's a number of reasons why you may want to do this. Um, first off, one thing to note though, is uh, I'm not actually getting as much current as I calculated uh, for whatever reason, uh, 10 milliamps current. This isn't accurate as a multimeter though. Maybe we're getting a little bit more than uh, 10 milliamps, um, but uh, we're probably falling short of 13.5 uh, milliamps of current. So there uh, may be some reasons why. So first off, we got 12 volts at the supply, five red LEDs in the same way. Doesn't matter where you measure current. And um, so I, just by luck, that jumper's in that same spot. We could measure current at that same spot. I was thinking that um, to get the actual current. But uh, in any case, we current's the same through this entire circuit. What's going through the power supply and the LEDs, the resistor are all the same. The LEDs are dropping about two volts each. So that's something you should learn early on in electronics. A red LED probably drops about two volts. Maybe there are specialty LEDs out there where they drop a different amount. But these little indicator LEDs, you can expect two volts. When you put them in series though, that voltage drop adds up. So where the drop actually occurs is the resistor. So it's dropping, it's dropping. Each one of these has two volts across it, but ultimately you got uh, for each LED, two volts less across the resistor when you take the power supply into account right there. So these have a fixed voltage across them. The resistor for the most part accepts whatever voltage is across it, unless it's gonna divide up that voltage with other resistors. Um, but here we just have drops. So it's dropping 10 volts. We got two volts across there. This is probably not a perfect uh, two volts. So this is what I'm expect, uh, what I'm suspecting the most, is that each one of these is uh, dropping a little bit more than two volts because of uh, uh, how much current we got through. Maybe it's a slight amount more, but again, they're adding up, putting less voltage across the resistor, which sets the current. So I did the math for uh, two volts across a 150 ohm resistor, and that's 0 0.013 forever amps. So I'm just gonna round it off to 13.3 milliamps right there. And uh, remember to convert it to milliamps when you're talking about it, but when you're doing the math, do it in amps. Okay, so another thing to be aware of, the amount of heat that the resistor is uh, generating. We could look with the thermal camera. Um, people don't usually uh, stick around for those videos though. So uh, we're just gonna look at the math. So 0 0.013 forever amps of current times two volts across the resistor. That's how you get, calculate how hot it's gonna get, how much heat it's gonna generate. It has to be able to dissipate that heat, be aware of that. So this will be twice as high because it's times two. Very simple right there. 0 0.0 to, we'll just say seven amps of current right there. So that 0 0.027, these uh, resistors this size are rated for a quarter watt, 0 0.25. So 0 0.25, you can see that's much higher. You should stay below half that though, 0 0.125. Again, this is much lower than 0 0.125. So this resistor is not gonna get that uh, terribly hot and uh, it is warm, um, but yeah, I don't know how long I could hold that because it's probably gonna heat up if I keep holding it, but uh, it's it's not hard to touch at all right there. So. If we had 20 milliamps of current going through a 220 ohm resistor, uh, when I've done that before, then it, it's like really hot. I can't touch it very long. So in any case, um, we won't dwell on that too much. So again, we have that 13.3 uh, milliamps current that we calculated right there. Connections are um, you know, not perfect, but they shouldn't introduce that much resistance when you consider it compared to 150. So that 10 milliamps is low. So uh, let's actually look at uh, the details. So now I grabbed the multimeter. I also got these jumper wires out of the way. We don't need them because that uh, only goes to the uh, negative supply right there. And this one only connects to the positive side of the circuit over there. So we actually don't need those jumpers, um, but I'm gonna keep them on the board. Uh, current went up a little bit, 11 milliamps of current right there. So that's uh, kind of interesting right there. Maybe because the LEDs got a little bit warmer, um, you know, current kind of goes up as uh, LEDs get warmer. So, in any case, uh, we have them on. We got the multimeter there. So first, let's take a look at uh, voltages. So, um, as I said before, the LEDs could be dropping a little bit more than uh, two volts right there, which is less voltage across the resistor, which ultimately sets the current. So this one's really easy. We 
changes to a V for voltage auto ranging. If you have a, a number uh, next to whatever uh, you got probably says V, uh, make sure that you put it to a number higher than you can expect to measure. We're only working with 12 volts here. This is auto ranging. I don't have to move the red probe for anything but high current. This meter, I never have to move the black probe. Um, some meters you do have to move the black probe for uh, certain readings. I got one. You gotta move it for capacitors, but I think that's it if you're looking at capacitors. So first, we can, uh, let's look at the voltage across the resistor. So I can go to the uh, top wire of that LED or right to the resistor, but the LED is a little bit more solid wire. And uh, there we can go. So yeah, we got less than two volts across the uh, 150 ohm resistor right there. So yeah, that tells me these LEDs are dropping, and I don't want to touch these two to, uh, or no, that's fine if I touch the, the two there to uh, the same spot. I don't want one of these probes to uh, short. I can short one LED, but there you can see I cut off the uh, power from that LED going around it. So the other one's got more current flowing through. You got to be careful of short circuits. So this is a beginner video. I thought I would just kind of do a little bit extra explaining of uh, uh, simple topics. So, in any case, there you can see. Actually, we got uh, we do have you know less voltage across the resistor, but um, this is just slightly more than uh, 10 volts right there. So that's telling me we're kind of losing a little bit, also uh, you know through this connection. So it's a little less than 12 to begin with right there, and then uh, the addition of uh, the voltage drop here so it's about uh it's about that point three right there we're losing about point three volts which we can see across here i think this is about uh point five volts less than uh two volts so okay yeah that lines up pretty good about point uh there we go that's even closer so um we got that it'll change a little bit as we got the connection so we can see the LEDs plus a little bit of shortage um, from the actual supply is giving us less voltage across the resistor. So that uh, is what I would have uh, figured, but um, you know, there's other things that could have uh, led into it. So now we just looked at the uh, voltages. We can see the actual current. So as I said before, doing the math, I expected 13.3 uh, forever um, milliamps of current and uh, of course, that's just a calculation. Real world, um, these can actually drop a little bit more than you calculate or whatever. That's not a perfect uh, 150 ohms. There's uh, other influences. So um, maybe you want to make sure, let's see how off the power supply is. So there's no current flowing right now because I just broke the circuit. And um, so we'll uh, come back to that later. I had no real reason to uh, go over there, but I'm not going to edit this out. So the current we're going to measure is in milliamps. This can go up to 600 milliamps, this particular meter, if I remember right, I always check, um, you know, for the uh, maximum current you can put through a meter. But if there's numbers, definitely put it to a number higher than what you're going to measure. So that is important for uh, when you're taking multimeter measurements. So we're going to bridge the gap. That's what's important when you are measuring current. Bridge the gap, and now you can see we got the current flowing through. So yeah it is uh, really close to 10 milliamps a current right there. And again, current goes up a little bit through semiconductors as they warm up for the most part. That's not always the case, but that's common. So when you hear of thermal runaway, here is what you're looking at. It's going up, but it will level off. This won't uh, go out of control because as current goes up, more voltage goes across the resistor. And uh, therefore, at uh, it's going to limit uh, more voltage you put across it. Um, the uh, more it's going to limit uh, current. So, in any case, uh, it, they'll uh, meet at some point where the rays that the semiconductors are conducting better won't overcome the uh, resistor, which will limit that current more as voltage goes up. So, we got that. We got that current measurement. Now that we uh, broke that gap as well, there's uh, no voltage across the resistor. We come to a dead end right there. You got to have a voltage difference on both ends of a uh, component to have a voltage difference. So we can measure the vo uh, resistor resistance right now as it is. We don't have to uh, pull it out. So another reason why you might have lower current than you expect is that the resistor might have more resistance. Now this is a 1% resistor. Um, there's other resistors um, like larger ones maybe it's like a 20% tolerance um, 
where this could uh, come into play with that. This is only 1% tolerance, but it's a cheap resistor. Um, so it may have a little bit more resistance, maybe even a little less than uh, what we expect, but probably close to like 1%. And it might be spot on 150 as well. And so yeah, actually it's a little bit lower right there. So the resistor value is going to give us a little bit more current than you expect for the voltage across it right there. So um, yeah, thought I would take that measurement because um, that was a fair amount of voltage difference um, or current difference than we were expecting. We were expecting about 13, at least 13, and this was only 10 uh, right there. And uh, so it's uh, a good reason why we should uh, troubleshoot the circuit, why we got less. And it's because uh, mostly the LEDs are dropping a little bit more voltage than two volts, which is actually what you expect. I believe if you get 20 milliamps of current through them, then they will be dropping about 2.2 volts. I think I measured that uh, before. So the amount of current you got flowing through them does make a difference. There we go. And uh, we got our circuit back together. We got our five LEDs. Now, another thing I didn't mention is, uh, it's a long video, but hopefully you're still enjoying and still watching. We got uh, five LEDs that are lit up with 12 volts. We could light up one LED with 12 volts. We need a higher value resistor, which uh, means um, we would be more limited on the current we're gonna get because uh, you're probably gonna use a quarter watt resistor and uh, using one resistor to limit uh, the current for one LED, it's gonna get a lot hotter. The energy or the power that you see coming from the lights here, those two volt drops, that's a uh, light, that's extra light we got. Instead of lighting one LED, we're lighting five right there. If we instead get rid of these four LEDs, use a higher value resistor to just light one, that resistor is gonna take that same power and create heat. So heat's not as useful in most cases as light right there. So you might as well get five times the light um, for the same amount of current right there instead of making a resistor hotter. So that's another reason you can do that. For larger circuits though, you don't wanna try to find a bunch of stuff to add in series um, to uh, dissipate. Uh, extra power to get more use out of them. You can actually take a converter. So a converter, a buck converter, would take uh, 12 volts and output uh, 10 volts. But uh, let's just say it outputs six volts instead. Um, so if you got a 12 volt supply and then a converter that converts it to six volts right there, then whatever current the power supply has to provide um, will only be half of what the six volts is providing because it converts that extra voltage becomes extra current for the uh, circuit. And um, so you don't need as much current from the power supply. So if we were lighting one LED at six volts and that six volt uh, LED with this protective resistor needed 20 milliamps of current, then the power supply would only be uh, providing 10, you know. But those converters also use up a little bit of uh, that current as well. So in this case, uh, whatever current we could save by using a lower voltage just to light uh, one LED, the converter would use up even more current than that. So it would be a waste of uh, power. Instead, we can just light five LEDs. And uh, so, in any case, there's a number of reasons why. The main thing is that you're aware that each one of these LEDs is dropping about two volts. So um, it's a good way to light up a bunch of uh, LEDs if you want to when you got extra voltage right there. So. That's it. Thanks for watching. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I post on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.